but the victim's neck was broken. Objection. But what about his back and some other things yes, that could you. be broken? Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's uh, uh, Leslie's birthday. Oh, it is. It's my partner's birthday. It's also it's also nine eleven a.m. Yeah. What about that then? <laughs> Nothing. It's an interesting times. <laughs> Good morning to you, Mr. Naruto. Uh, good morning, Professor. Ready for today's proceedings? That's an ellipsis. I hope so. I should be. Even I, with nothing left to... Good morning, my dear fellows. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you're here. Why, naturally. A true... A true gentleman stands shoulders to shoulder with his friends in battle at all times, Luke. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'll <laughs> see you later, then. Okay, now he left. Good. Now, Professor, we really need you to remain calm in the courtroom today. Yes. No! Do you try your hardest not to enter the witness stand uninvited again? Yes, I will. I... I realize it was a mistake, but I... My dear fellows, I must interject. Damn it, he's still here. Oh, you're still here, Mr. Sholmes. What's the matter? Surely you've overlooked some praise, have you not? To be cast in my direction, hmm? Sorry, I don't follow. Must I spell it out? I, the great Herlock Sholmes, the greatest detective of worldwide acclamation arose at some ungodly hour to be here now. First thing in the morning. A miracle, you must agree. Well, if I must agree, then... As you know, my sleep is quite impregnable. Iris had to deploy her full gamut of tricks, of tactics. She pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both cheeks, punched me, and kicked me from the bed. Wait, which cheeks are we talking about? She butt-punched me. <laughs> then she poured a boiling cup of her latest experimental blend on my face, and at last I was bestirred. That's dangerous. Yeah. Oh my. Iris has been busy. <laughs> Iris doesn't have it in her to go that far. She's too nice. Ah. Oh. I sense the spirit of a fellow scientist, one who relishes the infinite possibilities of blending tea. I'm the one worthy of praise here, <laughs> not Iris. This is my victory. Sorry to cut in. <laughs> oh, Inspector Gregson. Good morning. Gregson, my dear fellow. Why the grim expression at this delightfully early hour? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe because I've been confronted with a grimmer expression, eh? <laughs> Dear me, are you going to take that insult lying down, Professor? What? What? I don't know! Poor Professor. Anyway, here's the paperwork you asked for. <laughs> I'd love it just a minute envelope secret. with secret written on it. <laughs> What paperwork? Ah, I took the liberty of requesting it yesterday. I have a feeling it may prove useful. You wouldn't believe the hoops I had to jump through to get this brought out of the archives. I had to talk to Ken Dingling to get this. I had to jump God through Ken it. Dingling's circus hoops to God get this. Damn it. It's the professor's autopsy report. That, that mass murderer. Who killed five members of the aristocracy? He was found guilty in a closed trial ten years ago now. It was all done under wraps. It was an epic rap battle trial. And he was click quickly executed soon after the trial. It's all in here. Okay, okay. I I don't know what to say. Thank you, Inspector. Yes, much obliged, Gregson. 
are slowly locked at the yard are just doing what we can. In the shadow of the great Detective Sholmes, of course. Well then, Professor Hairbrain, this is it. Today we're going to lay this all to rest at last. I wish you the best of luck, Professor. I suppose he'll be in there today, will he? Drebber. Yes, we expect the prosecution to summon him as a witness. I'm still amazed that you managed to find him in just one day. I really owe you both so much. Counsel and the defendant, oh, the trial God. is about to resume. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. Thank God you're okay, Swedish bailiff. He has a cast on. <laughs> <coughs> Kindly make your way into the courtroom. This is it then. The final chapter. No, Ryan, this is no. the third case. We got two more. <laughs> wow, they're, they're counting their guineas mm. before they squeak. Funny. My heart's racing a little. Thank you, I thought it was funny too. <laughs> Not felt this before, actually. This strange foreboding. As if... Something's going to happen in this trial that I'm not ready for. Ryan, that's happened every trial. <laughs> I can't let this distract me from the only thing that really matters. Finding the truth. Let's see if it gives us a pause. No, no. Oh, Mad Dick is here. Mad Dick is here. Mad Dick's in the house. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I oh, yeah, they did tell us. He even told us he would be here. Again. We resume the public hearing of Albert Hairbrain, here present, who stands accused of murder. Are the counsels for the prosecution and defense ready to proceed? The prosecution is ready, my lord. I hope that they do a bit with him throwing the wine and, and Mad like Dick like either catches, catches it, it or, something. or like it hits him. That would be really funny. Or he cuts it with his sword like a bullet. You that know? would be really funny. It would be incredible. <laughs> Let this happen, please, game. <laughs> it would be really funny if it just hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Bonk! Oh, and shit, it plays, it plays like someone. a very cartoon sound effect. I'm not used to someone being there. That's on me. And then someone in the audience is like, I'm here every time you do that. <laughs> shut up. I don't. Shut up. I don't know you. <laughs> Did somebody just hear the wind? <laughs> We're not friends, so you don't count. The defense is ready, my lord. As promised, Lord Van Zeeks has his apprentice with him. Apprentice with memory loss. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks. His apprentice with Mad Dick. <laughs> yes, my lord. There appears to be someone standing at your side. Ah, yes. My apprentice <laughs> and assistant. <laughs> The prosecution believes today's proceedings will see the complexity of this case rise considerably. And that isn't the only thing that will rise. Yeah! Oh, that was pretty <laughs> rad. Good video game. Good video Very game. Very cool. Oh, hell yeah, put it back. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> I therefore instructed my assistant to attend to ensure the smooth running of the trial. And the smooth running of liquid refreshments by the look of it. <laughs> the way he holds himself, the way he moves, it couldn't be anyone else. He's, he's over there, he's just like... Mm. <laughs> picking his nose. <laughs> Scratching his butt. <laughs> I've seen that look sure. before. <laughs> but he's still suffering from amnesia. So this really nothing we can do at the moment. He has 
Dick Madness. <laughs> not reaper man this is dick man <laughs> i know but this is so very hard and so is he and so am i and so am i <laughs> what You're it on. would appear the prosecution has done a fine job in responding to the demands of the court made yesterday I understand you have successfully secured the engineer who disappeared. Hey, he's gonna take credit for what we did. Mm -hmm. Yes, my lord. I intend to call him as a witness shortly. Very good, very good. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury and corn child, who have been chosen at random to represent the will of the people in this courtroom today. God, I forgot about corn child. Are you ready and willing to proceed? Of course, my lord. I'm sure we all understand the importance of doing our civic duty. I do so despise deception and deceit. I find it so very weary. To take a man's life with a conjuring trick, it is against the magician's code, not to mention the law. <laughs> Any fake scientist would feel the wrath of God, if you ask me. Yes, Bridge, I'm not the same thing. It's very good. I, I kind of like the idea, like, that's because I think of the magician's code, like, no murder and people with magic. Yeah. Is, yeah. That, like, is that in the magician's bylaws? You can't, you can't cast a vada cadabra, you know? It's... A vada cadabra. Yeah. Um, we have to listen to what said on both sides of the fence and, um, then settle on one. That's it, isn't it? I forgot that she had the sound effect of, like, resetting the... Wasn't like this in my day. Wasn't like this at all. Okay. If all parties are ready to proceed, you may begin, Lord Van Zeeks. Before I do, my lord, there is a, a report I must read to the court. Ooh. Yesterday, at the great exhibition grounds, the evidence of primary importance in this case, the super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine, or Schwickm, which was installed on the experimentation stage, was deliberately destroyed in an explosion affected by an unknown person or persons. It was... what? An explosion? Put the gun down. This is an outrage. <laughs> yes, I heard this grave news yesterday. Scotland Yard submitted a report to my office in the evening. I read that the machine was blasted to smithers. Smithers! And the wreckage reduced to ashes in the flame. It was a coin flip in my head if you do the Smithers joke a second yeah. time. Yes, sir. I have here a photographic print of the scene taken in the wake of the explosion. It shows what little remains of the machine. Oh, yes. A terrible business. He did it to destroy the evidence, did he? That Enoch Trevor. Mm. The court will take this print as evidence, counsel. Post explosion. Late yesterday afternoon, the protection afforded to the machine by the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act, or STSAIR, was revoked. However, before a thorough investigation could begin, the invention was obliterated from existence. As such, this will become a very different trial. Ah. As it stands now, with no evidence on which to draw meaningful conclusions, this guy has to be guilty. <laughs> the authenticity of the Kinesis machine will remain forever in obscurity. Uh, indeed. A most unfortunate state of affairs. Okay, I, I'm guessing this is kind of a cute thing where he's like, well, that means that my friend's machine can't be proved as a fake. Uh-huh. 
She could be a genius. However, one thing remains clear. The victim's death was the result of the actions of the accused. Of that we can be certain. For it was the accused himself who was operating the machine and who ultimately caused its loss of control. But he didn't... Objection. Yeah, but he was told what to yeah. do by somebody else. As Lord Van Zeeks rightly says, this is a very different trial now. The accused accepts responsibility for his part in the events that transpired. He acknowledges that Mr. Assman died as a result of the accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unbeknownst to the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. Names, counsel, if you please. The engineer, Mr. Enoch Trevor, and the victim himself, Mr. Odie Assman. So what exactly were these two men up to behind the defendant's back? The defense intends to expose that information, thus establishing the unequivocal innocence of the defendant. What are you doing back there, big ass man? <laughs> Step ass man? God damn it, I almost said that. <laughs> Step Trevor. Step Trevor. What are you doing, Step Trevor? <laughs> Thank you, counsels. The positions of the prosecution and defense have been clearly stated. Lord Van Zeeks, summon your first witness, please. At once, my lord. The prosecution calls the engineer, Mr. Enoch Drebber, to the stand. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Beep boop, beep boop. State your name and occupation for the court. And state your make and model for the court. <laughs> name, Enoch Drebber. Occupation. Who gives a fuck? Hard to pin down, I would say. Did he just make a joke? <laughs> See that black monocle? Yes, I do feel as though I should get it somewhere. Tell me more cards! Oh, you too. I have the exact same feeling myself. <laughs> Your file indicates that you are currently being investigated in connection with another case. The theft of a waxwork model, is it? A, a most extraordinary sounding business. But that has no bearing on this trial, I assure you. Cleave it from your mind. It's a good cleave it from your mind. Too. You're familiar with the public experiment carried out at the Great Exhibition some days ago. The accused super high voltage instantaneous kinesis demonstration. Yes, you could say that. I am aware of it. There was a terrible accident, wasn't there? It was you, Mr. Drebber, who constructed the vast machine used in the experiment. Or so our investigations indicate. Can you confirm your involvement? Yes, I constructed it. In precise accordance with the blueprints. But that's all. Then the court will be very interested to hear your thoughts about the machine, I'm sure. An amazing device, if you ask me. The pinnacle of modern science, making instantaneous kinesis a reality at last. What? Good, good gracious! Do you mean to say that the experiment was bona fide? Is that your belief, sir? Yes, that is is very much my belief. Such a waste that it blew up. Objection. But we've already established the machine was nothing more than a prop for an elaborate conjuring trick. Objection. You've established nothing of the sort. <sighs> All that was shown during yesterday's proceedings is that the same outcome could have been produced by means of stage trickery. The defense merely proposed a method and demonstrated its feasibility. Nothing more. But, 
But... We've procrastinated long enough, I feel. The witness you will now give your formal testimony about the machine that you constructed for the purpose of the demonstration at the Great Exhibition. Understood. I met the young professor approximately one uh, year ago through Mr. Assman's introduction. He provided me with the blueprints and I constructed the machine to his precise specifications. It was no trick. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Tell me, did the victim have a twin? As in the know, Christian he? Bale movie, The Illusionist. <laughs> Spoilers for the hit Christian Bale movie, The Illusionist. Wait, wait, wait. It's not the Prestige. The is it's it the Prestige? prestige? God damn yeah, it. The no. Illusionist is the other one. They came out the same year. God I damn up it. The time. Yeah, yeah. All the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads and then crash headfirst into the crystal tower. A terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the science on which the machine was built was flawed somehow. A, a body double? That goes without saying, surely. To give the impression that something has moved, when in reality it hasn't. It's a basic conjuring principle. The deception cannot be achieved without substituting the original with a fake at some point in the performance. It's a lot of equivalent but exchange. Would I be right in saying you haven't managed to establish anything along those lines? <sighs> Incidentally, the prosecution has already confirmed that Mr. Assman had no twin siblings. Okay, thank you. Oh, it's my understanding that this witness is well versed in conjuring artfulness. But such talents do not indicate that he was actually able to accomplish what he claims. Namely, the construction of what, by all accounts, must have been an extremely complex scientific machine. Whatever do you mean? Yesterday's proceedings brought the true nature of your past exploits to light, Mr. Drebber. Indeed it did, my lord. As a swindler who preys on innocent scientists to elicit government grant money through conjuring know-how. Yes, it's true that I possess considerable knowledge of stage magic. But crucially, my scientific knowledge more than matches that of any academic in the field. Investigation of the witness's workshop attests to that claim, my lord. As evidence, the police found this Royal Society trophy for young talent in science there. Yes, that's true. We spotted it there ourselves. If a hypothesis is sound, it can always be forged into a physical manifestation with sufficient skill. Though, it, though I may have sold the secrets of some deceptive wiles to sniveling, talentless scientists in the past. Would, would you therefore assert that the explosion of the machine was... Uh... An unfortunate accident. Or, of course, a deliberate act of murder carried out by misuse of the science. Mm -hmm. Counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. Well being. Uh, actually, really quick, let me look at the court record, because we did get... Oh, yeah, we didn't look at his file. We got several things. We didn't look at the fucking... Head. Which, okay, I guess we can't... Yeah, there's nothing there's on nothing it. There's nothing for it. There's nothing on No head. This has got to be important. Okay, Condemned prisoner. Confirm. We can't even get their name? Death by hanging confirmed at midnight. Courtney Stevens. <laughs> Wait. We don't even 
get their name? Protection for confidentiality. Do we know who Courtney Stevens is? Yeah, that's, that's, that's Dr. Scythe? Scythe's name. That's yeah. Scythe? Yeah, okay. That's bullshit. Look at that photograph. Uh, we can't actually look at things, which uh, sucks. Yeah, I don't see anything on there. That I mean, there's obviously a, a drop hole beneath it. Which is, like, we're gonna, super... Look at the yeah. trophy. I don't think we looked at that. Uh, go back there. The trophy, son of Mr. Trevor, is a very prestigious word for a young scientist. Who is it for? There's a little metal plaque here. Look! Fostering burgeoning, burgeoning talent for the future of scientific discovery. It seems rather ironic, doesn't it? But clearly Mr. Trevor really was a very talented scientist. Yes, it's like Ray Yane on your wedding day. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's the free ride. You, you, you said, just didn't pay. I was like, Ray Ain. Like, what? What is attorney character? Is that? <laughs> uh, okay. I didn't, nothing stood out at me at like, we can just present a thing, but let's see here. Met him a year ago through Ass Man. Provided you with blueprints and constructed the machine to his specifications. It was no trick. The whole show was a fraud. It would have required a body double. Yeah, that's a problem. All the spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads and then crash headfirst into the crystal tower. Terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the science with which the machine was built on was flawed somehow. I feel like this is a presser. I mean, yeah, because in that case, the the instantaneous kinesis wouldn't have worked if right. the design was flawed. Right, right. Let's at least press here, and then we'll also get the, like, finishing the, the statement. Yeah. Little hint. So you understood the science, did you? <clears throat> Not in the slightest. Oh, right. As I've said a number of times, I'm an engineer. My job is to manufacture according to the blueprints I'm given. I would be inviting manifold problems if I foolishly allowed my brain to digest the ideas behind them. I could be accused of stealing those ideas, for example. But how is it possible to construct a machine without really understanding the principles it relies on? I don't think that's how engineering works. <laughs> well... You're practicing law without Whoa. really understanding the principles it relies on, aren't you? Like, the principles of law or the principles of the science? A very good point! Don't Mine. say that! Yeah, you you could have gotten offended. You really, you really... Stand up for yourself, Mr. Narahodo! The point is, the experiment resulted in instantaneous kinesis taking place. As such, the science must be sound. Yes. And really, experimental results are all that matters when it comes to proving a hypothesis. He's certainly very sure of himself. What do you think, Mr. Norahoda? Well, now that the machine has been completely destroyed by yesterday's explosion, it's going to be impossible to argue its authenticity one way or the other. But if we're unable to establish that it was a piece of stage trickery rather than genuine science, we will have no grounds on which to demonstrate Professor Hairbrain's innocence. Both Mr. Assman and this man in the stand tricked, tricked the professor and used him. Took advantage of his naivety and unbending belief in his work. I won't let them get away with it. And seeing as the professor is an old friend of Lord Van Zeek's, what on earth must he be feeling towards Dreb? Well, I don't really have an idea. Yeah, I guess just press some stuff. Uh, I don't give a shit about that. Let's talk about the blueprints. Yeah. Oop, wrong thing. It's clear that you both have. It's clear that you have both scientific knowledge and knowledge of conjuring magic. However, the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to handle whatever comes along. But your implication is that I furnished the machine with some trickery, I think. It's a possibility that we have to explore. Unfortunately, though, the machine has been blown to kingdom come. So there's really nothing left to explore, is there? 
It appears that the Kinesis machine was fitted with a timed explosive device of some kind. And there's nothing left of that device either. Not a single shred of evidence remaining, I hear. We must have planned this all from the outset. But in any case, it's abundantly clear that the experiment couldn't have been a trick. double thing. I feel like we have to get like an extra piece. Yeah. Or it's just press everything. It could be one of those. Ryan, they've already said before this point that he doesn't, whatever. Of course, that's it. Mr. Assman has a twin. Objection. Perhaps my learned friend wasn't listening earlier. Mr. Assman had no twin siblings. This game does realize other people can be made to look like each other even if they're not yeah. twins, right? No. I'm not saying that's the final answer is. I'm just saying it's with it like, he doesn't have a twin. That's why the, That means yeah. there's no possible way it could have been a trick. No, I heard you before, but the thread of hope hadn't quite left me. The demonstration could have been a trick if there was somebody who looked sufficiently like the victim. But Dr. Scythe absolutely ruled that as, out as a possibility. It is beyond question that the victim himself, Mr. Ashman, did move from the stage to the Crystal Tower. The fingerprints what? found at the scene <gasps> attest to the fact. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> so it can't have been orchestrated using someone who looked identical to Mr. Ashman, then? Hmm. What are you thinking, Mr. Narahoda? Oh, uh, n nothing. Just that the idea of someone who looked identical to the victim... I don't think so! ...is playing on my mind. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. That got me. I was, I was terrified. I'm like, what? Why did you jump? Um... Switch a silver cage and crash and burst into the crystal tower. Yeah, Character shot, undevelopment. Shot That's thing. I mean, we could present the wax head as just like a, hey, wax figures are a thing. Yeah, I was thinking that too, but I feel like that's not... I mean, I just press everything yet. first. Picture of Drebber. Wait, go back to the picture of Drebber. Golds something. I mean, I'm just looking at him and seeing if there's any difference between this Drebber and... Modern Drebber? Yeah, the Drebber. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have his... Plus the... mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I guess I just keep pressing stuff. Yeah, it crashed head first. Oh! That's it. That's it. It crashed head first, you say? According to the many witness reports from those there at the time, yes. Were you not there at the exhibition grounds on the day? Hmm. Unlikely. I rarely leave my workshop. Yet, another of your unique inventions was found at the scene. Well, it was the unveiling of a machine I'd labored over for many months. I saw it clearly with my own eyes, the birdcage plummeting headfirst into the tower. What a surprise. I believe the victim's neck was broken from the headlong fall, wasn't it? How would you have come by that information? Even an infernal recluse like me reads the newspapers, you know. According to the reports, two injuries were apparent on the victim's body. 
Yes, he'd been stabbed in the chest by a screwdriver believed to be be believed to belong to the defendant, and he had broken vertebrae as a result for the fall of a considerable height. Correct. My learned friend has been doing his research, it seems. Do we know which injury was the fatal one? A shot to the heart, and it was too late. <laughs> he gave love a bad name. Sadly not. <laughs> Forensic science is not yet at the level where such things can be determined. Except in Germany. <laughs> what we do know is that the victim died having sustained both injuries at some point during the experiment. And since he was found in the bird cage with his neck broken, it's obvious that he fell from a considerable height. Hmm. I suppose that's hard to deny. All right, let's get your ass. Get him. Go back. I just saw the bird cage appear above their heads and they crashed it first on the crystal yeah. tower. It get did not. Got, buddy. And it was damaged to the base. Objection. We've examined the bird cage that crashed into the crystal. That bleh. We've we've examined the bird cage that crashed into the crystal tower ourselves. As you can see, the cage, which is a wooden construction, has sustained damage in one particular spot. Following the explosion, it fell some 30 feet into the, into the glass of the crystal tower. That level of damage is to be expected, surely. I agree. The damage itself is entirely understandable. What doesn't make sense is the location of that damage. Hmm? All the breakages in the wood are at the base of the birdcage, not the top. What are you saying? That's the opposite of where they should be. That's right, my lord. The birdcage was at the scene. The birdcage that was at the scene is damaged at its base. So we have reports that the birdcage falling headlong into the crystal tower, yet the damage is at the bottom. The only way to reconcile these two facts is to accept that there were two birdcages in play that day, which were at some points switched. Switched during what wasn't a scientific experiment at all, but an elaborate piece of stage trickery. G uh, uh, uh. Good gracious! Uh, explain yourself, witness! I... well... If we examine the facts, there's only one logical conclusion we can draw. The damage on the base of the birdcage clearly indicates that it crashed tail first into the tower. Objection. But multiple witness reports claim it fell head first. The bird cage materialized in the sky next to a balloon, flying over the stage following a spontaneous explosion at an altitude of some 60 feet above ground level. Which is approximately 18 meters. Thanks, Susato. It then proceeded. Nerd. It then proceeded to fall some 30 feet into the crystal tower in the ensuing deflag de deflagration. Witness reports amid such chaos are notoriously unreliable. Objection. But the victim's neck was broken. Objection. But what about his back and some other things yes, that could you. be broken? Thank you. <laughs> he plummeted 30 feet into a heavy wooden cage. However, he fell. It would be unsurprising to find one or two of his vertebrae cracked, crushed. A riveting scientific analysis of events from the prosecution there. Though to be even more rigorous, you would have to say it was only one vertebra, actually. <gasps> he wasn't quiet for long. I find it hard to see what's motivating Lord Van Zeeks. This witness is clearly a swindler, and one to, to deceive a personal friend of his. 
If you're going to establish this, this, this deception, do it right. Sorry? I feel like that's the under. I feel like that's the undertone here. Ah, yes. And there's one more point the defense appears to have forgotten. It was obvious. It obviously wasn't a trick, as a certain truth very plainly demonstrates. What? It seems to me that the cross-examination had better continue until we resolve this matter. Mr. Drebber, you will amend your testimony with details of this truth you speak of. Of course. We must treat the matter scientifically, after all. Uh, I nearly had him there. Straight up doing the robot, bro. I appreciate that. The kinesis clearly took place because there's nowhere else 30 feet high for the birdcage to have fallen from. Oh, well, the this is photograph the of the pit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I would say the green cloth. Do we. Oh, 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 you're right. The, the picture of the balloon that got shot. Yeah, oh, that's that the one we literally. Is, it, is that. Yeah, yeah this, this is. This, is that the one where you see the thing the, flying towards it? Yes. The arrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um. Objection. Music didn't stop. Uh -oh. That's not good. Defense would have to object to that last statement, my lord. And I would have to overrule your objection, counsel. The defense would have to accept the penalty given. Glad to hear it. And you mm. would also have to think again. Hmm? Mm. Well, think. Okay. I mean, is it the hole under the the experiment that we have the picture of now? Oh. Yeah, it could have just dropped into that and yeah. got crushed from there. Yeah, I think that might be it. I don't know how they would replace that, but maybe this is, yeah, this That's is the, the one. That's the one that the bottom yes, part. Yes, 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 yes. Got okay. messed up. That's fair. Let's try that then. I still like our answer. No. Damn it. Not that. Hmm. I mean, I guess let's press it. Yeah. Hmm. The kinesis is clearly took place because there's nowhere else 30 feet high for the birdcage to have fallen from. Some. I guess there's something 30 feet exactly that we need to mess with. No, oh, it's we need to do something. Oh. So we don't we don't have the ability to object at the moment. Yeah, let's press him and see what we get. What do you mean? Well, before the demonstration began, the victim was alive on stage in front of the audience. Yes. There were lots of witnesses who saw Mr. Assman on the experimentation stage. That's true. And the victim's neck broke as a result of an impact following a fall. Logically, therefore, the victim must have fallen from somewhere. The balloon that exploded was at an altitude of 60 feet. The point of impact on the lower, on the tower, was 30 mm. feet up. Difference that difference of 30 feet. of 30 feet is therefore the total distance the birdcage fell. And there's no other location from which the cage could have fallen that distance if it didn't drop out of the sky. Ergo. Oh, okay. Hey, Can that's Edgeworth's have... thing. The victim himself must have been beamed from the stage into the sky above the crystal Can tower. We... Can we prove that the stage is 30 feet off the ground? Mm, a trenchant scientific analysis. Dear me, every time I hear it explained, it sounds increasingly plausible. Oh, yes. It's all very well thought out. Certainly all the spectators on the day saw it. The birdcage plummeting 30 feet into the air, I mean. I didn't see what he said. Yeah. What, what, look, at, look at the evidence. What kind, of, what kind of stuff we got with numbers on it? Um, oh. Damn it, I thought there would be a... 
a thing showing that it was 30 feet. Yeah, does it not say in the thing? No. Yeah, no. Fuck. It's apparently this. Even though it doesn't have actual scales. Or say what? it's 30 feet. What? Okay. But anyway, was it the same, so, so, same wigs? Uh, if, if you look at it, like the balloon up here is oh. roughly 30 feet, roughly the same distance to that ledge as the top of the stage to the ground. Okay, so we're, we're just meant can we, to assume... Hold on, can we, exam can we examine this? No. No. Is that all we get? We can't, like... Yeah. Wait, oh, you, you, you have to assume that... It's, it's scaled. That and... it's scaled properly. Objection! This is the diagram of the experimentation stage and its surroundings. We know that somehow the birdcage appeared in the mid-air before falling down into the crystal tower. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. However, if you examine the diagram carefully, You'll see that there is one other possible location from which the birdcage could have fallen. The same distance of 30 feet. Is it the hole in the ground? No. Well, it appears the defense has a possible explanation to put forward. Go ahead, counsel. Yes, my lord. Of course will indicate the place to which you are referring on the same diagram. The alternative location from which the birdcage could possibly have fallen the requisite 30 feet. Yeah, I th this, I, is, this is unnecessary at this point. Yeah, I appreciate... I, I'm going to stick with presenting the hole in the floor. Yeah. It's also... It should work. Like, I get they, they yeah. want to use the diagram uh -huh. to show, like, look, it Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's one of those things where, it's one of those things where realistically, working. both the things we said, you yeah. could have reasonably gotten to the same point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we knew, we knew the answer. We're smart mm -hmm. boys. The place I'm referring to is here. But that's where the birdcage would have been to begin with. Which is exactly the point, my lord. Yes. The birdcage was in the machine on the stage. But what we must also consider is that the height the, is the height of the stage itself. Go on, counsel. No, no, let him cook. It turns out that the experimentation stage was built at a considerable height above ground level. <laughs> Yo, shit! I want to become a judge just so I can say. Let just him cook. so I can. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Like, Tell... Objection. Objection! Sustain! Let him cook! No, yeah. no, let him cook! <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, I Overrule, let him cook! <laughs> oh, that'd be. God, that'd be so cool! Be yeah, you'd be the badass! Coolest really judge ever! <laughs> if you look at the diagram, in fact, you'll see that it's about the same height above the ground as the balloon was above the crash site. When the experiment got underway, the machine and the birdcage were engulfed in steam. At that moment, the floor of the stage gave way, and, if we assume this to be a void underneath, a void. this birdcage and the one seen by the audience would have fallen almost exactly the same distance. Once again, my lord, this all points to the fact that there was not one birdcage, but two. Objection! My learned friend has no evidence that the stage had such a contrivance in its design. Uh, we yeah, do. No, we, we do. do. Someone is responsible <laughs> for the criminal destruction of the Kinesis machine itself. That's true. However, the stage still stands. And take a moment to look at this photo... Take a moment to take a look at this photographic print of the stage following yesterday's explosion. Good lord! The metal, the metal grill that formed the floor of the machine is undone! Yes. Somebody called George Foreman! <laughs> 
most likely blown apart by the force of the explosion that destroyed the rest of the machine. The defense calls for the space below the stage to be investigated immediately. Mr. Trevor. Uh. It was you who built the Kinesis machine, which means that it was you who built the two bird cages that were used to carry out this deception. Ah, uh, uh, uh. Whether Professor Hairbrain's hypothesis is sound or not makes no difference, because it's the construction of this machine that matters, a machine designed to take Mr. Assman's life. And lay the blame firmly at the Professor's door, something that could only have been carried out by you, Mr. Enoch Drebber. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see what this dude's like full breakdown is. It's gonna be insane. <laughs> Fucking dope again. If my learned friend has reached the end of his wild assertions. Cosma used to open my juice God. boxes like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the prosecution would like to crush the defense's argument slowly, but surely. What? Your argument fails to hold water on two It can't counts. hold wine. Yeah. Two? <laughs> can you hold wine? Firstly... Before and after the experiment, this witness went nowhere near the Kinesis machine. Every relevant member of staff from the exhibition has attested to that. And I believe members of Scotland Yard have also been on watch duty at every public experiment. In other words, Mr. Drebber had no opportunity to switch the alleged pair of bird cages. But I've already explained why he wouldn't have needed to. The nonsense with the crossbow. That doesn't bolster your case at all. The man who disappeared from the stage and the man who crashed into the tower are one and the same. The forensic investigation team's report is unequivocal on that point. Ugh. And the second flaw in your assertion. I, I feel like we're gonna have to ask like how they determined that they're the same person. Yeah. And they're gonna be like, oh, forensic evidence. And we're gonna be like, oh, what forensic evidence? Right. And it's like his tooth or his, his butt his butt hair. His butt prints. Yeah, yeah. No, I his don't butt think prints. So. No one else has that. No one <laughs> else has that kind of work with. No one has an ass like ass man. Yeah. <laughs> Is a distinct lack of motive. Why would this man have wanted to take the victim's life? He had no reason to do so. A, a motive? Do I have to think of everything myself? In this series, yes. <laughs> I have here a contract provided by the witness. What contract is this, Lord Van Ziggs? The contract into which Mr. Drever entered, entered with the victim, Mr. Assman. It reads... Mr. Trevor is to receive 30% of all rem rem remunerations from government grants or yeah, other income. What is remunerations? Like 30% of all the, it's, the money earned. It's, I, like, it's, it's like your pay. It's, it's your payout. It's my brain wants to say remunerations. Yeah, but because rem remunerations just I would, feels right. wrong. Reading to say. it in my head, I would say. I I, I kind of hate the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thirty percent, certainly very favorable contractual conditions. But there was one very important provision bolted onto that clause. What provision? He has to be alive. Mr. Drebber may only uphold this right on condition that yeah. both contracting parties are alive. That's so specific. In other words, if either of us were to die, the contract would become null and void. So you see, I had nothing to gain from Mr. Assman's death. The diametric opposite, in fact. <laughs> Need I say more? 
The witness had neither an opportunity nor a reason to commit the alleged crime. In short, the possibility of Mr. Drebber having done as you suggest is nil. Uh. Uh. <laughs> He's just dancing now. Uh. It seems the defense's assertion was somewhat wide of the mark. Lord Van Zeek, you will submit the contract as evidence, please. Yeah, I would like to look at that. It's true. Trevor had no opportunity to switch the birdcage under the stage with the one in the Crystal Tower. He couldn't have done it. And in any case, I have no idea what his motive might have been. There is one aspect of your argument that still holds true, however. Huh? There were two bird cages. The prosecution is unable to deny that. Huh. So I'm sure you're on the right lines, Mr. Narodo. And I've no doubt there are other aspects of your assertion that are undeniable truths, too. Well, it would seem uh, that the defense has no rejoinder to offer. Well, I must say, I'm a little surprised. I came here to testify about the machine I built, and instead my reputation is defiled. But the prosecution's counter has set the record straight, I think. It's impossible that I'm the culprit. Objection! At the beginning of this trial, we believed that there was only one birdcage. Yet now we know there must have been two. In other words, there was more to that demonstration than we realized at first. Was there more than meets the eye? Transformers, coming out tomorrow. I think it's abundantly clear that the same applies to the culprit. Get to the point. The stage demonstration constructed and set up in its entirety by you, Mr. Drebber. Therefore, it's inconceivable that you had no hand in the events that transpired. Frowny face. So if the circumstances mean it's impossible that you could have carried out the crime by yourself, points to the fact that someone else was involved. Someone else? Uh, Consul, are you suggesting? Oh. Yes, my lord. Mr. Drebber had an accomplice. Is it Ass Man? Is he still alive? An accomplice now. Well then, I presume you're prepared for what's to come. Now that you're accusing not only this witness, but someone else of the most serious of crimes. Mm. I think it's Ass Man. If these accusations turn out to be false, then make no mistake. The prosecution will demand an equally serious punishment for your slander. Well, Counsel. Shit. They're gonna make us do it right now. Do you intend to pursue this course and formally accuse another party of involvement in this matter? Yeah, I think it's Asmin because then he would still be alive and their contract would hold. No, because he couldn't he couldn't fake that. I I mean like What do you mean? Like, if he was alive, he would have to create a new fake identity for himself, which I feel like still basically invalidates the contract. Yeah, but What's after the second part while, what you said, Zach? I'm saying if if he faked his own death, if, if we're saying they, they did this to fake Ass Man's death. Uh, I still feel like that would, in a way, invalidate the contract because he would have to create an entirely new identity for himself. I mean, who? Well, but then who cares about the contract? Right. Just well, I mean, yeah. e even if he is faking his death, just you just pay him the same thing under the table. Well, who cares we, about the contract? We can, we can look at everybody. My vote right now is on Ass Man, but we'll see if there's anybody else that mm -hmm. looks suspicious. At the moment, this is little more than a hunch on my part. I don't know for sure if Drubber had an accomplice, or even if he is really the culprit. 
One way or another, though, I have to make my own position clear as a lawyer. So what's my stance going to be? Did Trevor have an accomplice or not? I mean, it has to be an accomplice, yes. Yeah. The defense is ready to name Mr. Drebber's accomplice. No, we're not. <laughs> Somehow the two birdcages must have been switched. Everything points to that. But according to the coroner's report, that's not a possibility. Unless... Oh, the coroner did Unless it? the coroner is in on it. Yeah, it could be. Ooh, that's, an inter that's another interesting uh, possibility. I mean, she was really mad when we showed up. She was like, that's true. she rushed all of us out of there. Yeah, yeah, that's probably more. She likely. was the only one there. I think. I think me wanting it to be Asmat is thinking he was alive when he. It was him in there. He fell, was alive, and then there was a fake body. Yeah. That was dropped. But that's the inconsistency. Uh, but the that inconsistency itself is a clue. Oh, he literally just said, the fact that the coroner said it is an inconsistency, yeah. and that could be a clue. Can't solve. My lord! <clears throat> you have received a stark warning already. If you are nevertheless determined, then I must now ask you to identify this alleged accomplice by name. So, your answer please. Who do you claim to have been Mr. Trevor's accomplice? Now here's the thing, chat. This could be a fun stop-off point. Ooh. Because we have been streaming for almost two hours and 40 minutes. Is the German kid. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bohemian boy. Bohemian boy. You'll be my Bohemian boy. Bohemian boy. Uh, well, like, is there, like, a big bit after this? Because I feel like there's going to be a big bit after this. Yeah, probably. Well, this going to be a good cliffhanger, yeah. I'm just saying. They also have silver, they both have silver hair, so. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it, have has, to work it, has, it has to be them. <laughs> uh, also, how old is Drebber? Uh, he's four years younger than her. It has to be her. It has to be her. Now Rodama says, let's stop here. I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. You know what's going to suck is if we come back next week and it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> we start right away with getting it wrong and I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Well. What do we do? <laughs> I, hope, right. I hope it's here. I hope it's here. Folks, that's going to do it for their ace attorney with an actual lawyer. Again, if you want to watch this live, uh, follow us on twitch.tv slash save data team. And if you can, we really appreciate it. Support us on patreon.com slash save data team. But until next time, stick around for art. Because court is the journey. James with Happy Pride Month. Yeah. Uh -oh. What are they going to do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why are their faces so close? <laughs> they're just they're whispering well. secrets. Oh, okay. Uh, it's her. Oh, yeah. Miss Minicle. Miss Minicle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Miss Minicle. Looking very good. I love a good off the shoulder, uh, exposed shoulder look. It's, it's time out of time. You know, sometimes the best relationships are two goths and a witch. Hee <laughs> hee. Not a spoiler itself, just Drebber design in more detail. Nah, yeah. Also, we found Drebber today. Oh, yeah. This is good. Sharing hands. Also, sharing hands. Oh. What if we held hands? Haha, <laughs> unless. Yeah, holy shit, Les. I'm a sucker for Enoch Drebber's exact brand of edgelord nonsense. Please. Probably going to be my start for a foreseeable future and posting my, my creative energy into my passion projects. I hope you have more fun getting through the rest of the game, but it just keeps getting better. Yeah. God damn. Jesus. Yeah, it's horrifying. The fact that the eye patch looks like a... Yeah, it looks like a motherfucking... Uh, what's his name? The Babadook guys. Yeah. On, on, on his oh, human yeah, face. Yeah, oh, guy, yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. No, this is incredible. I hate it, list. but I love it. Pinky with hi, almost done with school, so expect more art from me now, I hey. guess. POV, it's Pride Month, and you're red white. <laughs> Very good. Uh. Very good. Me and my bestie, when we get too silly, aka Barbie and Ken mug shots, read y'all. Yes! Oh, this, these are really this meme good. Is so yeah, good. That one's, yeah, that one's very good for them. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Although, it, we all know it would just be Maya going to jail and Phoenix trying to get her out. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know Zach already saw this, but anyway, part two of my last week's comic. Yeah. <laughs> She's gone. Feet, dude. Feet, dude. You 
He's still there. <laughs> the fucking, they just took a picture of his feet. Is incredible. Uh, infamously dorky with Have I Shared Centart yet? You have Whoa. not. Yo. Whoa. Yo. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Is Holy it? Is shit. it? Is it different if the centaur is also a unicorn? That's a good question. Is, is there that, a name for is that? that? Is that something different? Is there a name? Uh, no, because I think the unicorn is just what what kind of horse you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't That's think there's really a good. name for it. And the motion. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? That's so good. Yeah. Holy shit. Hell yeah, Dorky. Just ran a minute with happy pride. Miss Faye, you're attracted to women, correct? Because I might be the same. Yup. So you're a lesbian like me. Hmm. Perhaps I'm wrong. I didn't realize being from the island of Lesbos was a requirement for finding women attractive. That's that's not what I meant. Yeah, shout, shout out to shout out to lesbians from the island of Lesbos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Galactic Whale Shark, Hairbrain, and Van Zeke's Horse Hour. Yeah. Aww. He's a some... big boy. Yeah. He's a big boy. And Hairbrain's so little. This is awesome. Hell yeah. Turns <laughs> and mods. The last day before my finals officially start. Wish me luck. Good luck. Uh, okay, you know I had to draw. Yeah, the Ken and Barbie meme. Oh yeah, fantastic. As, as, as Miles and uh, and Phoenix, so good, so good. I love it. <laughs> yeah, based on the joke uh, from from two or three weeks ago. Yeah, when she he it, he just turned and she was there, but she wasn't actually there. And he was oh like, yeah, it's yeah. like she's still here. <laughs> the peace out meme. Very good, very good. Also, genuinely great Susato in this That's picture. Very pretty Susato. Uh, and hope you guys enjoyed your playthrough this time around, as always. <laughs> what did he say? When you disprove the prosecution's claim, so it calls you a racial slur. <gasps> what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> also, you changed the phone to an old-timey phone. That's, That's really good. good. <laughs> uh, Reaper with, I hate Ryu's hair so much. Anyway, happy game, Mom. <laughs> Rambling about something unrelated to the previous conversation. <laughs> Does he ever shut up? No, he never does. <laughs> Very cute. Very cute. David with, oops, another Barbie yeah, and Ken mugshot. There it me. is. Yeah. <laughs> with pink to April, April, May, and Red White arrested for the J by the JFPD, Japan for you, police department. Very good. Very good. <laughs> uh, uh, Rainy Meadows, first time posting. Oh snap! Cosplay for best boy? Aww. Able to share my photos of my own dog in cosplay because my baby girl Nimue is a dead ringer. Yeah, look She couldn't just get like me all the Toby. way to France, but I Aww. think she could manage Tasmania. Aww. That's so cute! He looks just like Toby! That's so Aww. adorable! Aww. <laughs> yeah! That's what so a good cute. girl! Yeah! Very cute. She's doing so good! Adorable! Very cute. Yeah. Very cute. Thank you, Rina. Jin, oh shit, we're getting Jin art tonight. Oh, shit. Demon prosecutor spotted straight up chilling. Yeah, Ooh. that's good. That's really good. Yes. I appreciate the detail that he would use a fucking rotary phone. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Jin. Very good, as always, so Jin. Good. We eaten, we eaten. Uh, Beb with something very quick and very stupid. I hope it's legible. <clears throat> um, Iris. Yes, Runo. Well. I noticed that in this week's adventure of Herlock Sholmes, that the time bomb was changed to an anti-gravity device. <laughs> I was just wondering why. Simple. It's more exciting. More exciting than nearly being blown to smithereens? Don't be silly, Runo. Everyone knows about time bombs. Boring. An anti-gravity device, on the other hand, thrilling. I'm glad to know that my near-death experience was, quote, boring. <laughs> That's, very cute, That's like very accurate writing to this game, actually. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. It's a man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Spook. With, uh, I also moved to a new new place last week, so this team kind of snuck up on me. Here's a quick little drum ride I did during stream. You know his ass can't sit in a chair normally. Me neither. <laughs> yes. That's Super so good. good. Yeah. God damn. The shading you do is, like, incredible. Spook. Yeah. This looks great. Uh, little end dragon with the, I managed to finish the gay bats. Why bats? Because the internet has decided that they have the highest rate of gay. And if bats are really gay, then so are vampires. So I have spicy gay vampires. <laughs> 
very spicy Dang. Van Zeke sitting on the uh, those are some the hot. Table. Those are some hot boots. Incredible. Damn. Would you call them kinky boots? I would call those kinky boots. <laughs> uh, Crow Wizard definitely got some ideas of the stream, but for now, but hope suffices for now. Here's Wes dunking on the Mystery Boys from the Golden Idol stream, and here's a sketch I did for the Planet of Lana stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Ha! Mystery boys are a sham! <laughs> Wait, since when did Bridge get here? <laughs> yeah, attorney boys rule. Step up. Who is the... Who is the final person? Is this... Is this Spider-Man? <laughs> but what is he holding? It kind of looks like a Spider-Man outfit. Yeah, is it Carl well, wearing a Spider-Man outfit? He's wearing the thing. It's Tom Holland. <laughs> it's Tom Holland. <laughs> he's the spider it's incredible. Oh, it's the, he's the, That's the spider right. of Lanka. The spider of Lanka. God damn it. Oh my god. That's really good. <laughs> That's really good for <laughs> <laughs>